First, perform hand hygiene. Let the alcohol rub dry on your hands. Then don your gown. Choose the donning method that fits best for you. You may have to practice a number of times to find the best fit. Be sure that the shoulder is in a good position so it doesn't slip off. Next, don a pair of long cuff surgical gloves. The reason we're using surgical gloves for airway and anesthesia procedures is to be sure that the cuff covers the gown and does not expose your skin. Now you want to don a pair of nitrile exam gloves, the same as we would use in the normal operating room procedures. The reason for a second pair of gloves in anesthesia and airway management is that we will use the glove to resheath dirty equipment. Now fit the N95 respirator mask over your nose and mouth and put the lower strap in the middle of your neck and the upper strap in the middle of your head. Fit the nose piece so it's snugly fit and make sure your chin is covered. Perform a quick fit test by placing your hands over the mask and taking a deep breath in and blowing out to see if there's any leak. While you're donning your N95, be sure not to touch your face with your hands. Now place your face shield by centering the foam over the center of your forehead and being sure there's a nice fit around the back of your head with the elastic strap. Be sure that it's not gonna slip into your field of vision while you're working. When managing the airway and planning to intubate a suspected or confirmed COVID patient, you need two anesthesia providers and one anesthesia tech. The patient should be pre-oxygenated with as low fresh gas flow that is considered safe and avoiding throughout the induction any positive pressure mask ventilation to avoid aerosolizing the virus. A very clear plan of action between all anesthesia providers is essential. Notice the video laryngoscope on the right side of your screen and the anesthesia tech holding open a sealable Ziploc bag ready for any airway equipment that is dirty to be discarded. Communication with the team is essential and when you're ready to begin the intubation, you should turn off the fresh gas flow. Then it's important to disconnect the mask so that the circuit peak can be immediately connected to the endotracheal tube. Using video laryngoscopy, we find our view and place the endotracheal tube. And the additional airway provider is immediately ready to inflate the cuff and then remove the stylet. The stylet is then discarded and the circuit is immediately connected to the endotracheal tube by the second airway provider. The airway and the circuit can then be handed over to the second airway provider so that the intubator can remove the glove and resheath the laryngoscope blade. The blade and the glove can then be dropped into the sealable plastic bag held by the anesthesia tech. The anesthesia tech will then follow their policies and procedures as to how to process the re-sterilization of this equipment. A doffing station should be set up by the exit door for the operating room, the one that leads into the hallway. To doff your PPE, start by removing your first glove. Keeping in mind the outer part of the glove is dirty. Touch dirty to dirty, and then slowly and carefully slip your fingers under the cuff of the second glove and carefully remove the glove, taking care not to snap the glove. Care is also taken to keep your hands away from your face while you're removing your gloves to avoid any potential contamination. Then perform hand hygiene. Rub your hands for at least 20 to 30 seconds until the alcohol rub is clear. Now remove your face shield by leaning forward and grasping the back elastic strap of the face shield, pulling up and away from your body, then immediately discard the face shield. Perform hand hygiene. Removing the gown can be quite tricky, but the most important thing is to follow the simple principle that the outside of the gown, particularly the front part of the gown, is dirty. 
The inside of the gown is considered clean. You want to avoid reaching across your body and you want to avoid reaching in front of your face. There's no perfect way to do this, but pay st special attention to avoiding contamination. Try to only slip your hand inside the clean part of the gown and one by one remove the sleeves. Without crossing my hand in front of my body, I'm able to touch the inside clean part of the gown and slip each shoulder out. Then keeping in mind that we had clean gloves over the cuff, we can assume that the cuff is clean and we can slip our fingers underneath and pull each arm out. Again, touching only the inside of the gown, collect the gown and then place it in the appropriate receptacle. After exiting the operating room, you can remove your mask. Keep in mind that the front of the N95 respirator mask is considered dirty. Reach behind your neck and take the lower strap off first. I like to lean forward and allow gravity to keep the mask from flipping up into my face. Then grasp behind your head the top strap and again using gravity so the mask falls away from your face in one movement throw the mask into the receptacle perform hand hygiene we've added a step because we're in the operating room and we have the added ppe of having a surgical cap so in this circumstance uh, yes even though you're in the operating room remove your cap perform hand hygiene and place another surgical cap Once your PPE is successfully doffed and you've performed hand hygiene and placed another surgical cap, you can go to one of the scrub sinks and perform hand hygiene with soap and water for at least 30 seconds.